So it can be handy to want to send information, particularly complex information, back out of Flutterflow to something like you know Xano or another backend. But when you do it, the, the complex types, like the uh, location type, can be pretty bad for that job. So let's let's take a look at this. Let's just say, for the sake of argument, you want to have a new backend call. Let's make a new one for a second here. Add an action, and the action will be, say, an API call to, well, let's just say I had a relatively simple one. I'm just called it Bibble right now, which just wants a single, which wants to take like your latitude and longitude. But what you'd like to be able to give it would be a from the current location of the user. But the problem is it reads out the current device location. And the reason for that is that the current device location is not, in fact, a number. It is instead a complex object. And so what I could do is go over to my API calls over here. I could change the Bibble, and it's not actually going to work setting things to change AI like this. But if I had a query parameter, I could say that it is going to come from the variable, and I could say what my variable is going to be. And I could say my variable is just going to be, I don't know, like a string or something. And I'm pretty sure if I were to say that it's a string, I should let it go through, but it will go through in a really useless way. It would look like lat long with parentheses and whatever's supposed to be inside it, you might have doing some text parsing. That's not really that useful. But just to illustrate the fact that it would uh, probably work, I can go back into here to click on open, click on here, change the value, and go to my global properties. And I'll give my current device location because what it'll do under the covers is what we call a two-string method. So any given object, all from all the complex ones from, from most of these languages, you can say, I want to take this object, turn it into a string, and it'll turn into something that looks like what we really want. Uh, so what I could do here is just say, it, it'll probably look like lat long and then negative 4.2 comma, neg you know, 3.38 point two or whatever it is. But it, it would look like something like that which wouldn't actually be helpful to you because what you're looking for in this case is just get like latitude and longitude. How do we extract simple things from these complex types? And the tricky part about that, if I just go fix this for a second and go back over to my variables, I'm going to tell my variable is not going to be a string, it's going to be a double, uh, which will then have the effect once I click save here and I go back up to here that the, the I might open this up and click on this call. If I click on latitude, it won't actually let me use that latitude anymore because current device location doesn't actually match that type. Because even though latitude and longitude are both obviously numbers, the lat long together is this more complex type. So how do you break up these kinds of compound types? And the answer is going to be, like I said, through a custom function. And I, I made one over here that we can take a look at. Here you have a custom function. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make one for longitude because I already made the one for latitude here. So let me just walk you through the process. You click on the add button. You say I want to make a custom function. We'll call it get longitude. And then it's going to say the return type is actually going to be a double, right? Because we know that longitude is supposed to be a number, which is the number of degrees north, south is supposed to be. North is positive, south is negative. And, the, and then we can add an argument to it. And the argument is going to take, I'm going to call it lat long, is going to actually be of type, and this is the cool part here, an internal one like lat long. So you'll notice there are other sort of complex types that are in here like Google Place and Lat Long and Range and some of these others. And, and this approach is a really useful one for being able to extract useful information from it. So now I can say double Lat Long. And what I want to do is just tell it to return. And the, the cool things I do when I'm working in these custom functions or any of the code in Flutterflow is pause because it has built in IntelliSense under the covers it's using. Uh, Visual Studio Code's Monaco editor, and it will it will reveal to you what you can type after that. So by just typing in what I knew was the input, which was lat long, and then just doing a dot, it tells me, okay, these are things I can use. And here I want to say I'm going to get longitude. And now it's going to be like, wait, wait, I can't do that. Why can't I do that? I can't do that because of something called an optional key that's up here. And we could mess with this more, but how about we just not and we just say question mark and then that way it will return lat long if it exists and return the longitude and i think otherwise it'll return a zero and it'll return a null if it doesn't actually have a number and it will return a whatever the actual longitude is if it doesn't have the actual longitude so i call that get long and you can see up here i made another one called uh well I'll call it no save save there we go and i can click on this new custom function i'm just going to rename it get lat which one I previously made, you can see it works basically the same way. And it doesn't like that at all. Great. Okay, now it says returns get lat. Fine. Save. 
and I can check for errors. So be this with me, it says there are no errors. Fantastic. So now what we can do is now we have this get lat and get long, but we can we have the ability to break up the location into both the latitude and longitude. And I can open this guy up and I go back into my backend call, which I was calling Bibble. And I can set the variable to not just current device location. We don't do it that way. We're going to, I'm just going to remove that. And we're going to say, instead, we want to actually work off a function. Because first you have to say the function, then you'll pass the argument. So the function is going to be the get lat. And the latitude is going to come from global properties, current device location. See? And we can say confirm. And now I, there's another variable that's also going to require, which is going to be called... Call, we're going to get the longitude and the longitude we're going to set use the function once again so first you pick the function and then you apply the underlying variable to it this caused me a lot of confusion before and i say current device location and confirm see now what will happen is i will send back uh, to my back end it could be your xano it could be your firebase it could be whatever you're using for your back end for flutterflow you're sending a latitude you're sending a longitude you're sending them as individual numbers that you're able to extract because you made this relatively simple function which I will put back over here and the and uh, the show right here. And, and the key thing about this, there's only one line we ever had to change in here. Change the return value, you change the arguments, and you insert this one line of code, which one is for longitude and one which is for latitude. And remember, the whole idea is we're going from complex to simple, and so we're better off having two simple functions rather than one complex one. So I hope this is a useful introduction to using custom functions to making the complex things simple in Flutterflow, and I'll see you again soon.